Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Invest Africa. I'm Alicia Sekum. According to the Small Enterprise Development Agency, family owned businesses make up close to 50% of the economic growth of South Africa, though only a few of the country's iconic family companies have managed to remain in business over the decades. The trend is also relevant to the rest of the continent, with the majority of SMEs operating as family owned entities. How do you make sure that family businesses retain their longevity across generations and are they the type of investments you should be looking at? That's the topic of today's show. And joining me in studio this week to share their insights are Craig Stevens Jennings, who's a partner of Consumer Markets and Technology at KPMG, Jonathan Marks, who's director of the full-time MBA program at Gibbs, and we also have the CEO of a 42-year-old family business, Ryan Bacchus from the Bacchus Brothers. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining me here today. Jonathan, let's kick off with you. I mean, you don't do business with friends, much less with family. I can't count the number of times I've actually heard that phrase being used. Just how popular is it venturing down this family business avenue and making that kind of investment in the current economic environment? I think it's an inevitability that you'll end up working with family. And I think if you look at the statistics worldwide, uh, well in the majority, in the 80% of businesses are family businesses. They might begin as family businesses and end as something else. But I think that they tend to begin as a family enterprise. And I think there are a lot of reasons for that um, that maybe we can explore as we chat to the other guests. Mm -hmm. But I think that it is an inevitability and I think it makes for a good investment, both as a family to invest in your own financial future and ultimately as that business begins to grow for other investors. Craig, what makes a family business different to any other? Um, I think there's a number of aspects, Alicia. Um, I think the combination of family and business together make it more complex. Um, <coughs> balancing um, the, the family's interests and values with business objectives and strategies is not always easy. Um, so that's probably the primary difference. There are many others, but I think that's probably the primary difference. Mm -hmm. Ryan, let's bring you into the conversation at this part uh, because you've grown to be a part of a family business now where the Backers Brothers legacy started back in 1971. What's the appeal for you? The appeal of me working for a family business. Um, you know, I love working for my uncles. Um, I'm very close to them. They're my three uncles, which is uh, Bernard, Norman and Tyron. Mm -hmm. They've been in the business since the beginning, and my father runs the property division. So me being in the furniture side, I get to talk to my uncles on a daily basis, you know, see them on a daily basis. So, Do you still like them on a daily basis? Hey, I love my uncles. You know, <laughs> the more you see each other, the more fond you get with each other. And um, yeah, I love, um, I'm very blessed to have to be working with my uncles. Okay, so we've hear, we, we're hearing from someone who's involved in a family business here, Craig, but the major issue right at the top is how you, you know, separate family and business issues. There's a fine line that, uh, you know, that could be crossed there that where there's no end to business talk and focus when it comes to uh, family members engaging even after business hours. So the business never sleeps. So, yeah. I mean, things can get a little bit tricky, a little bit yeah. dicey. Yeah, I think they can, Alicia, and I think the, the key is to create some structure uh, and to create uh, a routine within the family and within the business to create some boundaries, to create a common understanding within the family around work-life balance. In a family business, it's rather more work-life integration, but it's understanding uh, how the different family members respond, what work-life balance means to them, mm -hmm. and being able to adapt uh, the management style of the business to incorporate all those different aspects. So <clears throat> it really goes around work-life balance, and, and um, more and more nowadays, it becomes more about work-life integration than it does about balance. Yeah, uh, Of course, Jonathan, what this brings into the spotlight then is corporate governance as a whole, because you need to adhere to corporate governance, as does uh, any business. I mm. mean, uh, you know, you've got to argue, though, whether this works uh, for family businesses, where so much happens informally and, uh, you know, outside of business. I, I was begging the question whether it's appropriate for regulators in the first place to insist on a strict adherence or whether family businesses should be left a little bit to their own devices? I'm not really of the opinion that businesses that are family owned or controlled should be treated any differently. I think that mm -hmm. they should be governed in the same way as any other businesses. But the point that Ryan made earlier, I think illustrates one of the aspects or strength of family business and that there's an intimacy in a relationship 
that occurs. So I think that there's another layer of governance that often occurs. And maybe with larger family businesses, there might even be uh, some sort of family council that might act as another layer, somewhere in between the board of directors and, and the shareholders, assuming they might not be the same people. I think family has an interest in business. Mm -hmm. And one has to find some kind of governance, governance structure that allows them to have a voice knowing that they might not necessarily be involved. So how do you include the next generation of a family in, in the thinking around a family business, even though they're not actively involved in the business itself? Yeah, mm. let's take a look at the kind of business plan that you've got on the table and the kind of corporate governance measures that uh, Bacos Brothers uh, really employs, where there is a governance uh, framework, uh, just how you know, strict a structure that uh, Craig highlighted are we looking at on your end? Mm. The biggest problem that I had was we went from 48 staff members to 180 staff members within three years of me mm. taking over. Mm. And from 40 so staff members, it was a very much a family business. Um, it was, you know, people loved working there because it was such a relaxed environment. Mm -hmm. um, the uncles are absolute gentlemen, you know. Mm. You know, walk in, kiss the staff, hello, how are you, hug everyone. If someone's upset, we generally want to know why you're upset. Mm. So the biggest problem that I had was keeping that warm family culture mm. and still bringing in that very strong corporate governance because yeah. managing decorators, mm. very arty <laughs> types of people, mm -hmm. and then you have to bring them into this very mm. strict cultural thing and you don't want to mm. demotivate them was a very mm. tough thing to, to balance. but. Mm. At the moment, it seems to be getting right. Uh, people how, how love working. How did you get it right? How do you how do you get it right for you know uh, fitting into this more formal formalized structure? You know, most of my day is dealing with staff mm. and showing them that we care, mm. we care about them. Mm. How are you today? If you're upset, what's wrong? How mm. can we make life better for you? Mm. Is it the company, or what can we do to make it better? Mm. And you know, the more effort you put in, the more rewards you get. Mm. There's no doubt. My uncles, mm. I, I got that from my uncles as well. You know, we want people happy at work. If mm. you're not happy at work, mm. you know, how can we make it better for you? Mm. And the people that don't fit in will have to leave because it is very much a culture back us brothers. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And the people that do stay end up staying for 35 years plus, 20 years, 15 yeah. years. So, so, let's, so let's put the focus then on that skills mm. base that mm. a company actually employs because we've heard the phrase rags to riches to rags in three mm. generations mm. before as a mm. result of inappropriate appointments mm. for the sake of mm. family as such. So let's mm. talk around you know, how much risk that in fact poses and how businesses can actually mitigate, Craig, against mm. that risk. Yeah, I think what you're talking about, Alicia, is succession. Yeah. And, um, you know, shirt sleeves, shirt sleeves to shirt sleeves in three generations is a term that I heard also mm -hmm. within my family. And <clears throat> I do come from a family business. Um, I think, again, what happens is that very often decisions around succession are emotive mm -hmm. uh, and, and made emotionally rather than rationally. Um, sometimes appointments and succession appointments are based on family standing rather than competence. Um, and that uh, is not healthy. Um, although it is endemic in family businesses, it needs to be managed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, th the guidance really is to plan properly. So plan for succession properly. If you need, if, if businesses need an advisor to take them through the succession, get an advisor. It's often a good idea. Provides an independent view. Um, setting goals for the succession in terms of what the business would like to achieve and align those with what the family would like to achieve in terms of succession. Setting some key performance indicators for um, the people that are moving through the business, be they family members or non-family members, so that you can give the entire organization the perception and the, and, the, uh, and the idea, the clear idea, that succession is about competence and performance and not only about family. Yeah. And I think it's important to do that. Otherwise, you have the potential that the 180 employees that you have feel that it's only family members that are going to be successful. There's no place Absolutely. for me. Whereas if it's based on competence, there's a space for them. Could I interject here? I think that the succession planning is really a link to the life cycle of a business. It's mm. a step in the life cycle of a business. Mm. And it's different for a family as a corporate owned business or yeah. an investment owned business. And you've got to think of three dimensions. You've got to think of the growth of the business, mm -hmm. the growth in management skill that's needed, and the changing shareholder relationship. Mm. And I think those three need to be managed, and I think that's part of what you were saying, mm. is that there needs to be an integration mm. 
between yeah. these elements of a business when you're thinking about succession. Well, we'll get more in depth into uh, succession, succession planning in just a bit. Before mm. we do, Ryan, uh, you know, uh, with what's being said at the table, from your experience, has there been a point where blood's been thicker than logic? I mean, let's get to that. Uh, to what extent has that posed a potential stumbling block for the business? Um, when I was appointed, there were some staff that were a little bit critical if I could actually handle the job, and that was the biggest problem. Number one, I was one of the youngest at the time. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of pressure for me to, you know, prove myself, prove myself to my uncles, prove myself to the family, and most importantly, prove myself to the staff. And, you know, eventually they could see that my intentions were good. I asked everyone how could I make the business yeah. better? What's wrong with Backus Brothers? What's good in Backus Brothers? fix the things that are wrong and enhance whatever the, everyone's liking about the business. And then eventually people did come around and saw that, you know, I'm genuine, they can talk to me, mm -hmm. and you know, the intentions are good and we're here to look after everyone. Absolutely. Craig, uh, BE requirements, I mean, in a family business, it's got to be uh, a tough requirement to fulfill. Are South African businesses getting that right? Um, I think to some degree, BE is really self-serving in some ways. So if your customers demand that you comply, you comply to be successful in your marketplace. So if that is required, family businesses are addressing it. The biggest challenge for family businesses is at the ownership level. Families don't necessarily want to give away ownership. But I think as people become more familiar with the BE scorecard and the BE regulations, and they realize that there's more to BE than simply ownership, and that you can in fact achieve a very good score for BE without giving up ownership, mm -hmm. they're beginning to get it right more and more. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ryan, uh, talk us through your experience in actually managing growth, because not only has Backus Brothers grown as a retailer, but you alluded to, to it a little uh, earlier, you've diversified with a strong focus on property development as well, and you've seen growth in that realm as well. So, you know, how do you reap that kind of success? What kind of plans have you as a family business put in place to ensure that you're a sustainable business? You see, <clears throat> my father, Dennis, he runs the property side. Mm -hmm. So he takes care of A to Z on the property side. My brother, Sheldon, he's an architect. So he's gone into the property side and he's a developer on his own, in his own right. Mm -hmm. What makes it easy is that each one of us have our own job to do. My father does the property. Mm -hmm. We don't really argue. We all give our you know, opinion and that's how the property runs. And then on the, on the furniture side, my uncles are very involved with the designing of product, as I was mentioning to these gentlemen at the back. Mm -hmm. um, the uncles help with property, with the, sorry, the designing of products, new ranges. When we have big clients, they're there to you know, assist and schmooze the clients, pull out the red carpet, and make sure that you know, they're happy with that, and then I handle the operations of the business. So each one of us have our key focus. That's our areas. We all talk about everything else, but I think that's what helps us sustain a successful path is that we each designated with our certain mm. jobs. Absolutely. Well, adhering to good corporate governance, of course, sets up that framework that we talk about that serves to regulate exactly how decisions are made, who's accountable uh, for, to whom, who's responsible for what, and how effectively that uh, business is going to be managed as well. We're heading into a quick commercial break, but there's more on Invest Africa when we return, so stay tuned.